Hey friends, on last week's episode of this show, I had one job and that job was to name this show. I even wrote it at the top of my list while I was recording. Right there, name show. And I thought about some names and I thought about some ways that it could be creative and funny and how could I rhyme center students with, there's really no good words that rhyme with that. And so I finally just landed on one that's practical and describes exactly what we're doing right now. So the show is going to be called, We Are Still Inside. On this episode of We're Still Inside, we're gonna talk about some fun things that you've done this week. We're gonna update you on how our plant is doing. We're gonna recap our week of reading the Bible together and we'll send ourselves off with some fun announcements. Oh my gosh, that's such a cute dog. Last week, you might remember that Planty looked generally the same as he did from week one, but now we're in week three. We have been really not doing anything except watering him once a week, but I am happy to report that he is doing better. I think we should get rid of these guys, these little ends, because I think there's no hope for those, but we are on the road to recovery. Planty's doing well. So a little rough, I've never cut hair before, don't judge me, but he's looking better. Now let's water him. Nice and hydrated and happy to report that we have another week of lockdown, but we are still doing fun things. This week, Liv went to the beach with some of her cousins and some of her siblings, and then afterwards, they went and got ice cream together, which sounds like the most fun thing in the world right now because ice cream and the beach are the best two things in the world. Hey guys, just a quick note. I probably look a lot different in this shot than I did approximately 0.7 seconds ago. That is because I went and did other things with my day, but then some other people texted me about some good things that they are doing, and that is the most important thing of my day is how good your days have been. So I thought I would come back and record more. So this isn't in order. Something good that happened to Logan this week is she started her new job at Meijer. And it's a crazy weird time to start a new job at Meijer, but it's also an awesome job time to start a job at Meijer. And so if you ever go to the Granville Meijer and you see Logan, make sure you say hello and don't shake her hand because that's against the rules right now. Robbie has always been one of the coolest people ever and that's just confirmed because I asked him some good things about his week and he said that one of the best things about his week is that he went on a lot of walks with his dog. Good job, Robbie. You are living your best life. Lastly, I talked to Cassie who's currently in California with some family who's so smart because she went to California before we got locked in the state of Michigan and she's still there which is just so brilliant. We should all be Cassie. But Cassie told me that this week her brother <laughs> proposed to his girlfriend and she got to take pictures for it. Are you kidding? You're in California, you got to witness your brother get engaged and you took pictures. Cassie, we are so jealous of you. Okay, now back to where I look a little bit different than I do right now. So we're in week three of our soul exercises guide, Faith and Fear, and this week we learned about provision and how God provides for us. Let me show you my notebook. I got some new pens, and that is the most exciting thing in my life right now. So this is week three, and it goes on to that, that page. Now I wanna talk about the passage that we read about on day three, which is John 21, one through six. So John 21 is towards the end of the Gospel of John. So it's after Jesus has died, has been resurrected, and shows himself to the disciples again. But the disciples aren't with Jesus at this time because he's gone away. So they're back to work. They say, we're going to go fishing. And a couple of them go out into the boat and they go fishing, um, but they don't have a ton of luck. And by a ton of luck, I mean no luck because they don't catch anything the whole time that they're out on the boat. I'm gonna read verses three to six. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter said, and they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, have you caught any fish? 
No, they answered. He said, throw your net to the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. So I don't fish a ton right now, but I used to fish a lot growing up because my dad is a crazy good fisherman. In fact, this is a fish that he caught this past weekend. Yeah, like what is his life? But I know that when my dad spends all this time getting ready to go out on the boat and going out there and, and getting ready and driving all the way out to the middle of the, the lake on his boat and then finding no fish and being able to catch no fish, that's incredibly frustrating. You put all this effort in and for the disciples, no fish meant no money because then they couldn't sell the fish and earn a living. So instead of being afraid and thinking like faith and fear, it's probably more faith and frustration. Like what is going on and why can't we catch any fish? And then to make it worse, this guy who they don't know is Jesus yet, walks up and he's like, hey, have you guys caught anything yet? And they're, they're probably so annoyed. Like, who is this guy? Can he stop telling us and reminding us that we haven't caught anything? And so they say, no, but probably like, no, back off. And the man says, well, why don't you try to put it on the other side of the boat? You're probably thinking, yeah, we already tried that. We know if there's no fish on this side of the boat, there's not gonna be any fish 10 feet away on the other side of the boat. But they try it and when they do, they catch so many fish. The Bible says they catch so many fish that they can't even pull it back into the boat. When they bring it back to shore later in the Bible, it says it was so full that it almost ripped. So what's the difference? How is it possible that they were able to fish all night and catch nothing, but then as soon as Jesus enters the scene and they try one more time, they catch so many fish that they can't even fit them in their boat? Well, the difference is Jesus. And the difference is that Jesus asks them to try one more time. He asks them to have faith one more time that doing this again, doing something that they've done over and over and over again is finally going to yield the results that they want. And regardless of how they feel, regardless of if they're like, okay, fine, we'll try it again, even though we don't want to. And it results in more than they could have asked for, more they, what they could have, than what they could have imagined. And so that's really applicable to my life right now because I want to have faith that everything's gonna be good. And I wanna have faith that, you know, God's gonna use this and I believe he will, but there's a lot of things I'm frustrated about right now too. Like I'm frustrated that I can't be at youth group. I'm frustrated that every time I go to the grocery store, I have to wear a mask. In this passage, Jesus says, just keep having faith. Just do for them, it was just do it one more time. And for us, it means day after day, just keep trusting each day when you wake up, say, God, I trust you today. I have faith that you're going to use this. I have faith that you are good and you desire for COVID-19 to be over. And I'm going to give you my day and give you my fears and give you my insecurities about what's going to happen. And I'm gonna trust that you're gonna use this for something amazing. As you're reflecting, and you've probably been reflecting over it this week, but think about where is the one place in my life that I need to try one more time, that I need to have faith one more time. It might be in a relationship. It might be in a situation in your home right now where you just feel like no matter how hard you try, it's never gonna work. But what we can learn from this passage is that when Jesus shows up, things can change even if they haven't changed for the longest time. You just be thinking, how can I turn my frustration with the situation into an opportunity for faith? How can I take what I don't understand and give it to God and have faith, even if I feel like it's never going to be resolved and trust that he can resolve it in some way that's good for me and is good for his kingdom. One thing I just wanna talk about before I go is NTS camp. At this point, we are still moving forward with NTS camp. It's still happening June 14th through 18th at Indiana Wesleyan. We are Indiana two. So if you go to sign up, you'll see Center Church, click on it, register yourself, have your parents register. If you need scholarship information, you should have gotten a scholarship form sent to your home, but if for some reason you didn't, let me know, I can send you one. So if you have any questions about that, let us know. Okay guys, I think that's all. Miss you, love you. If you need anything, let us know. Me, Ashley, John Michael, Danny, John, all here to help, all here to listen anytime you need us. We love you and we will see you next week on We Are Still Inside.